I'm Henry Turley, and we have a real estate development company. We call what we do community development because we're more interested in developing areas of the city that we think don't have sufficient or proper development. And uh, so that's what we do. And the first place uh, we started was downtown Memphis because downtown Memphis in 1977, when we formed the company, was just so pathetic. It, it really was. It was Charlie Vergas at the Rendezvous, First Tennessee Bank, a couple of law firms and the city, uh, you know, municipal headquarters, but pretty well everyone had left. I thought the best thing that could be done was to build a significant residential community down here. And so we began uh, with the Shrine Building, which is just across the street from us. I'm looking at it, that, that buff building there. And uh, we put, I think, 92 apartments in that in 1980. And we've continued to do that. Our current primary interest is in building in poor, primarily black areas for poor, primarily black residents and seeing if we can make a nice neighborhood for them. Awesome. And the big one we've done is uptown. It's about a hundred square blocks, starting at A. W. Willis, one of my favorite civil rights partners, and going up to where industry takes over in North Memphis, and going from the Wolf River out to the medical district. I, I didn't get it as a child. As a child, I was going to. Uh, uh, change southern agriculture. When I was, I was born in 41 and we were pretty well a one crop part of the world, cotton. And I thought that we should be more diverse and do things differently and whatnot. And I went to the University of Tennessee on agriculture scholarship and quickly changed my major and went into, did a liberal arts degree. My dad got me a job with a friend of his in real estate, and uh, uh, I put on roofs and unstopped toilets and that sort of thing for quite a few years, property management. And uh, one day they asked me to be president of the company, and I said, well, no, I have gotten interested in the city and in doing things that you shouldn't do with other people's money and, uh, and other people's time. So, so I've, uh, I've started downtown and, you know, went around and did all kind of awesome. things. I, I don't know that I advise, I would advise them, but uh, I, my, initiative was more or less driven by the community. And uh, you know, somewhere along the line, the bank started making me fill out financial statements. And uh, I went to my CFO and said, where'd all the damn money come from? And he said, hell, I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't make it, I just count it. <laughs> I thought to myself, well, what you really did is something no one else was doing. So I found out something that no one else was doing and did it anyway. So that sort of gave me, put me ahead of the game. Now, had it crashed, I'd have had to do something else. But in fact, downtown, the first thing we endeavored to do is work pretty well. And, uh, but I got to pick the sign building there. If you noticed, it has the biggest windows nearest the river. I got to pick the cotton exchange building 
it has the history of the city, and it too is, you know, right at Union and the river. And so I kind of got first choice by doing things no one else was doing. Well, uh, I like the way we were approaching it, you know, with guys like Mike Todd, who started way before I did, and guys like High Cotton Brewery. You know, when, when he came by here and talked to me about it, I said, I believe I'd be scared of this. That's the only building I've ever sold. Uh. <laughs> Well, yeah, I sold it because it was a brewery. Well, it would, it, uh, he did a good job. And uh, <laughs> I, I got out there, <clears throat> I got out to the edge because of Pitt Hyde. We were talking one day, <clears throat> and he said simply, Henry, I wish you'd put some of your energy and whatever, creativity, in the district that we, <clears throat> and our foundation are so interested in improving. And I said, tell me where? He said, the medical district. So I went out there and I looked at the property along Linden and developed a, a theory about how we could do that whole track. And in the meanwhile, another Memphis leader besides Hyde, George Cates, uh, who was on the board of the University of Tennessee, said, if you want to develop in the medical district, go meet Ken Brown, who is the chancellor who can, uh, at UT who manages their whole, their real property portfolio. And he said he wanted to develop the 10 acres running from Madison to Jefferson and Manassas to Hamlin. But if he developed it, I, oh, and he said primarily he wanted to build housing, community, populate the area, more or less like we had done downtown. And he said, but if I do it, It'll be harder to do with all the rules I have to follow. And people will think it's a dorm. So I want you to do it. They didn't say that. Of course, we had to go through a complex process to be selected. But our credentials by that time were pretty good. So they selected us. And uh, that's how we got out in the edge. And the first thing we said we want to do so we want to connect to Todd, Hyde, Victorian Village, which I call Mallory. Um, talking about Bealey and, and company. Uh, as well as the University of Labonner, so on and so forth. And if we live long enough, we want to get back up into Uptown and go northwardly to where we where we quit at Manassas Street. I've always had an idea that uh, you could develop a children's zone if you linked La Bonner Children's Hospital to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And you made it an area that accommodated a broad spectrum of their employees. You know, the high-priced doctors and researchers and the low price cleaning personnel. And I want the whole damn bunch of them over there. You know how I got to be inclusive? It was so hard to talk somebody into coming downtown. And I didn't want to miss anybody. And people said, you are generous and have a good spirit. And I would think to myself, uh -uh. I don't want to miss a deal. <laughs> um, you have to ask Alex Turley, but it's about 400. And uh, it has oh, probably six or eight commercial spaces, stores. Well, I hope, I mean, and this is clearly our duty to UT. Uh, and I should say they only leased us the land. We have a long-term lease to, uh, to uh, and, and we're developing 
in a way that we think enhances the university, helps them attract top talent, and makes it convenient to go from your laboratory to your home or go right back if you forgot something, that sort of thing. Just and makes a pretty institutional looking neighborhood a more complete neighborhood. So we're, you know, we think about crap like that. We've just been in the racket so long and in urban development. People think of urban as tall buildings, housing, office space. Urban is like Jerusalem was, you know, when on Palm Sunday. People lived there, people did business there, people died there. You know, when I started, I didn't have no, in a whole lot of money, and uh, a very small company, me and one one secretary bookkeeper, and I knew I couldn't make much of a difference, so I knew we had to do things that other people could copy, and I knew we would only they would only copy us if we were successful, so I tried to be cautious about what I did. And, and people did. They, you know, we did pretty well on these projects, and uh, people copied it. So it's better, but it's anywhere but done. I love the Ford deal. The last couple of uh, weeks, I've been driving around West Tennessee, wondering how <clears throat> the towns of West Tennessee, say, of course Memphis, of course Jackson, but also. Covington, Somerville, Oakland, Brownsville, Ripley can benefit from Ford. That's, that's a big deal. And they're doing that green initiative here. Think about it. That's, that's, that's a big deal in these United States. Ask John Kerry over on the wall there. You know, he's got to clean up the world before he gets old. Well, they've got one there, you know. They, they, have, they have finally come into what was the Gibson Guitar Building. And of course, like all of us, they're not assembling as frequently as they used to. So uh, Richard Smith, Fred's son, uh, drove that initiative in his office is at uh, 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 Colonel Lee and Third Street. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, he's got, I mean, he, he procedurally occupies the whole Gibson building. That's awesome. Well, hell, I want, I want to, you know, I'm serious. I knew I couldn't do it. And I needed, you know, all the Mike Todds and the Billy Orgles and the Jack Bells. And I'm the first person I ever talked to when I thought about going downtown was Philip Bells, Jack's daddy. Remember Jack's 94 next month? And uh, I saw him at a cocktail party, and uh, he was having a drink, as for a sign. I went over and said, Mr. Bells, I'm Henry Turley, and I want to try to redevelop and energize uh, downtown. Can I do it? And he said without hesitating, Henry, we have to do it. That's, that's, that's a guy who immigrated from Eastern Europe as an eight or nine year old and became, get this, the largest property owner in Tennessee. Wow. Not Memphis, Tennessee. And this, this was a Jewish immigrant from the east part of, of uh, uh, Europe and came over and uh, was a butcher and a grocer and then a developer. And then he was, was smart enough to, to give birth to Jack Bells, who made him a pretty good partner and certainly made me a partner. You know, I get credit for a lot that Jack Bells enabled me to do. Well, that's where I was, but now I was so broke. I don't mean broke, I mean I was living a decent life, but, uh, but not extravagant at all. And <clears throat> I had to use other people's money. 
And uh, I got to be friendly with a lawyer who was setting up professional uh, pension and profit sharing plans. And it was advantageous for them at the time to do historic buildings because you got a big tax credit. These guys were all big owners. So it was typical to kind of force a deal. But we tried, and you know, that may not be economically valid, <clears throat> but we tried to make it not only something that provided a good tax incentive, but also cash flow, which also was a good development. And we worked like the Dickens for that. I mean, we, I used to be worth a hoop. You know, I'd come early and leave late. Yeah. And we'd try, and then I was fortunate enough to meet Tony Bologna. I, I arranged to buy the shrine building with other people's money. And I um, thought, who could be the architect here? And I saw there was a guy named Tony Bologna who was doing Beale Street. He was doing the architect. I said, well, those buildings are older and crummier than mine. Let me go talk to him. And he turned out, I mean, he worked in the office next door for many years. He's a consultant now. But he became the, really the effective force behind my ideas. Mm -hmm. And he and I went to Tupelo, Mississippi, looking, for, chasing the Toyota plant is a, a, a predecessor to the Ford plant yesterday. He's, he's 82 and I'm 80. Well, that's again, that's why I'd always get partners. I got my best childhood friend, Bill Dupree. When I went down in what's the South Main Arts District, the South Bluffs District, I got Bill to join me and he, he was consistently, the Commercial Appeal used to publish a list of the highest earners in Memphis, you know, from their corporate reports. And Billy was always number one. He's just a hell of a guy. But he's a childhood friend of mine, but he could help me with money. And <clears throat> we began buying, uh, like the Taylor Company, Taylor Paper Company, was a five-story with garage, or with basement, I made it a garage, a perfect square lofts building. And uh, I thought, hell, I can't just do one loft down there by itself. People will be lonely and afraid. So uh, uh, I, I went and bought four more buildings right down there. And uh, I was instructed by an artist. They called, we called it South Main's Art District. And there were two artists <laughs> in the whole, whole, damn, whole damn area. And one of them was a guy named Robert McGowan. And he told me what to do, and I'd do it. But uh, I remember sitting straight up in bed one, one night about 3 o'clock. And my wife said, my God, Henry, what's wrong? And I said, Lynn, I, I have five loft buildings under construction, and I've never seen a loft. I just heard there was such a thing in New York. <laughs> and set up, I had a, I had a real crick in my neck. I got nervous as, as I could be. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, you know, Victorian Village is an important part of our history, and it's tiny. It's I mean, I admit it. But uh, we were so pleased when that young man bought the uh, Lowenstein house, and we should have pointed it out while we were out there. He's just doing the lawn and cutting down a couple of trees that expose the house, let you see how significant it can be. That, what, 100-plus-year-old house right across from that spanking new health department. Wow. 
And it just, you know, that kind of speaks to the same kind of diversity that you and Hyde brought. Yeah, just yeah. different, different ideas, different approaches, different yeah. scale. Well, we got to, we got plenty more to do. You know, you look at it, it's, it's, uh, we got lots of improvements to make and ways to invest our energy. I've, I've wondered if people would leave New York or leave Washington and go to a smaller market and I don't know. I called or a friend of mine called New York to make a hotel reservation in a hotel we've stayed in for years and they said uh, no you cannot have one of the penthouses. Uh, instead you can have two rooms two couples. Uh, on these days, December 14 through 16. So it would seem that New York is coming back in a big way. And uh, it's, it's urban. But we're, you know, we can do urban at our own scale. And uh, I must say, when I come back from New York, I sure feel at ease and comfortable in Memphis. I mean, every, you know, I know everybody that, you know, they pretty well help me any way they can. Uh, and it's just so damn easy to, I mean, I forgot something today, had to run home and get it. it took all of five minutes. I, I think of the edge as primarily serving the medical district. And that's why I went out when Pitt Hyde said, please help us animate the medical district, make it a better and more pleasing place. And I think that's what the edge is doing. Now the fact that it's essentially connects to downtown is, uh, I think makes it a little stronger and downtown becomes a good example of what it can become. <clears throat> but it, I, I certainly see the edge district, if you will, or the MMD, the medical district, going down to Linden and perhaps to Crump and then going up to Chelsea and perhaps further. Well, that's 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 what that's what Hyde told me when he went out there. And we went together, and he asked me to work out there. He said, "I'm going to see a vital community from my office, which is on the river, all the way to Ansdale Snowden, where we where we are were." And uh, uh, he said, "I want it all to be nice." And I had not thought of that connection before, but it's, it's bold, but it's doable right now.